Good day. Hey, this is Sedlo, and this is another DCS Mission Editor tutorial. Today we are going to talk about advanced waypoint actions and triggered actions. You may have heard of these before. You may be using them already. This is just going to be a quick overview, nothing too in-depth. Now, what is a uh, waypoint, advanced waypoint action? I'll show you. Let's uh, set up an A10C here. And when you put it down, these are listed under the advanced waypoint actions and they are pre-populated for you, okay? Um, basically what this is, is when an aircraft reaches a waypoint, in this case, the starting waypoint, it will do these things. It will start an en route task of CAS. So if there's enemy ground units here, it will attack them. You could set uh, the reaction to fret threat is evade fire so it'll maneuver and deploy countermeasures to avoid uh, aircraft fire um, you could set it to no reaction so it won't try to evade you could set it to a passive defense where it just pops out flares and chaff you can say allow abort mission which will uh, allow the uh, unit to jettison all its stores and head back to base running away uh, and evade AAA uh, in the horizontal to do some jinx. Um, that's an option you can set. Uh, you can say you can use the radar. In this case, there's no radar. It doesn't matter. The formation it'll set if you uh, start off with uh, two aircraft or more, you can set the formation. In this case, it's pre-populated to trail, but you can set it to all these different things. Okay, that's kind of cool. Echelon right, nice and tight. You can do that. Anyway and so on and so on and so on. So basically this is going to happen at the starting waypoint. Now where you will probably use this most is um, in, the, in a different waypoint. So let's pop down a waypoint here, just past the runway. And you can see this CAS A ref, it basically just is a continuation of this task here. Um, so basically you're still going to be doing looking for targets and, and engaging them if you if you see them you can delete this and uh, that's fine too so what we're going to do is say when this gets to waypoint one we are going to get it to uh, let's get it to strafe okay so that's listed under perform task strafing and you see this little thing here this triangle is where you want it to strafe and I'm going to put it in the control tower thing here okay we're gonna say we're gonna strafe that target we're gonna use cannon release quality or quantity um, all let's try that um, we're gonna do that once uh, group attack you can click if you want both aircraft to attack you could uh, force a direction it attacks from so in this case it'll be attacking either from the north or south I don't remember because <laughs> Uh, the arrows are a little weird in DCS, but uh, you can click that and it'll attack either from the north or south. And the length of the burst across the ground, you can set it to like 500 feet, 200 feet, 100 feet. Let's set it to 100 feet. All right, let's, uh, let's fly this mission here or watch the AI fly this mission. So uh, basically once it gets to waypoint one, it's going to receive the advanced waypoint action of strafe. And then it'll, uh, it should, oh, that's not the right one. This is the guy. All right, there's uh, the airfield way up there. Um, let's just accelerate time. I should have put it in a little closer, but that's okay. And once it's past the runway a little bit, it's going to uh, do that uh, strafing action. There we go. It's going to start. Now, it is going to maneuver weirdly for a little while here until it gets set up. The AI is not very good at, uh, at reacting quickly to these things when you command it to attack from the ground. So look, it's attacking from the north. Uh, it's gonna, there we are, diving into the control tower. And it's fired a bunch, boom, right there. It's about 100 feet long, that burst, and it, and it worked. So that's cool, that worked. So, advanced waypoint actions. Um, there are a lot of them to choose from, okay? Uh, we had the straight, we set it to strafe here, but uh, you can set it to attack a specific unit. You could tell it to start an orbit. You can uh, make it perform aerobatics. That's all under perform task. Start on route task is kind of the same. This is what I use when I want it to attack a certain unit or, uh, or engage something when it's within a zone. 
I find start unroot task works better than perform task for that sort of thing. So uh, just keep that in mind if you want it to attack a unit, do a perform on root task. Now, say you want it to, um, let's give it a, t a perform task to orbit, okay? So what it's going to do is it's going to get to waypoint one, it's going to start an orbit towards waypoint uh, two, which we can say is uh, here. All right, let's go back to waypoint one. Oops. Waypoint one, we can say it's going to orbit between a waypoint one and waypoint two in a circle. Okay. Stop condition. We can uh, say it will do this until user flag, whatever you want, 999. Or you can uh, say, well, it's going to do this until um, 830 in the mission, right? And then it'll, it'll stop. Uh, that's just a little thing for you there. All right, uh, let's go back to, we're gonna perform task, start on root task, perform command. Okay, this is a one I use a lot. Um, you can set the AI to become invisible at that particular waypoint. Now it doesn't mean it's disappeared from the game. What it means is it's not visible uh, to AI units. They can't see it on radar, they can't uh, attack it. And this is something I like to use, say if you want to script a, a, a bad guy coming to intercept uh, a good guy, um, and you don't want, say, the surface air radar missile site to start engaging them, you want it to be a surprise. Set it to invisible until you get to uh, where it's set to attack, and then you can make them visible again by doing, see the invisible command, there's a check mark, you could do an, a, another um, action and uncheck that, and then it'll become visible again. All right, and there's a whole bunch of stuff here that you can look at. It can set it to switch away point when it gets to a certain place. You set the frequency, whatever. Um, set frequency is good to use on your own um, aircraft if you have an AI wingman, and say you have to switch frequencies. You say set frequency for unit. We're going to say it's for... Um, the wingman here and then you can say set it to Navy common 243.0 and then uh, it will do that at waypoint one triggered actions are the same sort of thing as advanced waypoint actions but it does not rely on reaching a waypoint to activate now what I mean by that is you can see it's the same sort of thing, perform on route task, perform command, set options, whatever. But this, these will happen when you want it to happen, not when the AI gets to a certain waypoint, but any time that you want it to happen. What are you talking about, Sedlo? Well, I could say, um, say we want it to strafe again, all right? Put a strafing here, and uh, this time we will try to strafe this building plop it on there. We're going to say cannon. We're going to say all. Uh, it's going to attack once. Group attack. Let's say it's going to attack from the west. We can add that. And it's going to be a 500 round, uh, 500 foot strafe. Okay. So Here it is. Um, it's going to be exactly like the waypoint one, but this time it's going to happen when I want it to happen. And I want it to happen. New trigger. Time more. I want it to happen 10 seconds in. So in the actions, click new. AI task push. This is the one. And we're going to select strafing. See how it's auto there? All right. So in 10 seconds into the mission, I'm going to want it to strafe. And I'm going to say strafe. I should really use this. Yeah, thank you, Eagle Dynamics. This is good. Strafe task pushed. OK. And one thing I do want to make sure is that um, just for demonstration purposes, I don't have any strafe things. OK, so that's good. So in 10 seconds, it's going to um, attack that thing and uh, so triggered actions are great 
they're just like advanced waypoint actions, but they happen whenever you want it to happen at a certain time, or if a certain unit is dead, or whatever, um, it'll happen. So here we are, I'm going to accelerate time, 10 seconds in, strafe task has now been pushed. So the aircraft will attack that thing, and it should attack it from the west. Let's see what happens. All right, we're running in on it again from the west. There we go. So it should be a length of 500 feet for this uh, burst of bullets. That looks about right. You see how the aircraft, once the task was pushed, flew out like five miles or more and then turned into attack? That is something that you will find in DCS. Um, it is quite annoying <laughs> because sometimes you want it to just attack right away. Um, but that's a limitation that you have to uh, uh, live by right now until the AI uh, gets a little bit better. But um, that's where it is. So yeah, that's a, a pushed um, advance, or sorry, a, a, a pushed triggered action. So, lessons here. Advanced waypoint actions are things that you can command the AI to do when it gets to a certain waypoint. And the uh, triggered action is something that you can command whenever you want it to. I hope that was clear. I have a habit of rambling on, but uh, basically that's where you're at. Um, and play around with it, experiment with it, um, get an idea of how far the AI will have to fly out before it comes and does that task. Uh, yeah, that's it. That's all I've got. Uh, hope this was helpful. I'll talk to you all later. Bye.